programs that will give you a chance to call in with your questions or your comments. Next, at 8 p.m., Manhattan at Large will be presented in two parts. Part one, moderated by Lower East Side Councilwoman Miriam Freelander, will focus on getting older. What's ahead? Her guests are Roger Snajek, the governor of the Gray Panthers of the New York City branch, and Dr. Ruby Benjamin, a member of the National Board of the Older Women's League and the first vice president of the New York City chapter of OWL. Part two, moderated by Upper East Side Councilman Bob Dreyfus, will discuss New York City rent regulations. Whom should they protect? His guests, excuse me, his guests are Howard Malikzi, counsel to the Deputy Commissioner of Housing and Maintenance, and Mary, Mary Yannicker, the Executive Director of the Burden Center for Aging. At 9 p.m., JBFCS Family Life Forum presents Adult Learning Problems. Now stay tuned for Manhattan at Lodge, next on City Channel L. Good evening. I'm Miriam Friedlander, City Councilwoman in Lower Manhattan, and welcome to Manhattan at Large. Tonight we're talking about something that affects about, oh, about a million and a quarter people in New York City, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot more coming in. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Just keeps going on all the time. A lot more we're, getting there. Too. Right. We're talking about getting older. How about that? Would you like to talk about that with a nice big smile? We feel it's a pretty good thing to do. Maybe you don't know about it yet. So we are going to talk about what's ahead when you're getting older. And we have some wonderful people here who have been talking about it for some time. We have Dr. Ruby Benjamin, and she's from OWL, the Older Woman's League. Isn't that interesting? OWL is very wise, huh? Yes, very I wise understand. and very proud, too. She is. Yes. Did I understand that the OWL was an old goddess, too? Uh, could be. She very hooted very wisely, huh? Yeah. Very good. Okay. And we also have with us a convener of the Grey Panthers. And his name is Roger Shan uh Oh, wow, Roger. You give it to me. Roger Sanchek. That's it. Okay. <laughs> Roger, they're going to be looking at you and saying, where's that old gray hair? You know, that's come out of the Grey Panthers. But you're going to tell us about that, why growing older and where we're going you are an important convener in that citywide uh, organization. Uh, you know, everybody's talking about it this month. Isn't this the official month? This is the official month. I guess we're always getting older every month, but perhaps this is the official month. I know tomorrow I'm going down City Hall and we're going to celebrate the Department of Aging. Uh, that sounds really solid, aging, you know. Senior citizens, are, have you been celebrating Senior Citizens Month anywhere Not so around? Much. That, that puts me into the role of being a junior citizen, and oh, I, I, I think see. we're all citizens. We're all citizens. <laughs> well, is that your concept? I mean, what's happening with the older people? Are we talking about senior and junior, or what? Well, in, in the Grey Panthers, as you pointed out, I'm one of the younger Grey Panthers, and we do include uh, members of, of all ages. About two-thirds of our members are over 60, but uh, mm -hmm. We have people from their teens onwards. We tend not to look at the divisions uh, that age creates in our society as being real and meaningful, and we try to work in an intergenerational way to overcome the, the things that separate us on the basis of age. We see ageism as a kind of uh, a form of segregation uh, that has ah. its parallels with sexism and, and racism. Uh -huh. So we look at the life cycle as a continuum. We're all getting older from the day that we're born. That's true. That's very true. But it has a different impact, doesn't it, when you're 20 and when you're 60? 
Well, it really does, and, and uh, a lot of people don't realize the impact it has even when you reach the age of 60. I mean, there is as much change that can go on in a person's life from the age of 60 to 80 as there is from birth to 20. Many ah. older people find themselves moving around, uh, they lose a job, a spouse dies, friends begin to uh, ah. die or, or move away. Uh, they may move themselves. They may face a period of hospitalization, perhaps a period of nursing home. You know, you remind me of something I keep telling people, and I know they don't believe me. And I said, the most interesting times of my life came at sort of 10 or 20 year periods. Mm -hmm. uh, things kept changing for me. And it, was it better or worse? I never said. But it was different. Different. That's mm -hmm. what change is always is. that what is. changes? And this, I think, is what keeps us active and productive and alive mm -hmm. and growing, always growing in another direction. And we always have something else within ourselves to tap and to try out, regardless of what our age is. Sure, we can't do what we did when we were 20. I don't run up and down stairs. But there's plenty that you can do. I'm uh -huh. sure you. I've seen you walk, Miriam, so yes, I, I know that fast. you certainly walk quickly. <laughs> uh, but we're always changing, and every age has, and every stage has its advantages and disadvantages and its potential. Uh -huh. So you think what we've been saying about growing older has been sort of uh, stereotyped and boxed in? Mm -hmm. It isn't fully true? Mm -hmm. I don't find it uh, true, and uh, the Older Women's League have not, has not found it true either. Uh -huh. What's interesting, um, Roger was saying that they have ages, uh, uh, people of all ages, whereby the Older Women's League was established for the midlife and the older woman uh -huh. because we have been invisible up until now. And uh, you know, these are the women who have been yeah. home, who have been uh, taking care of families, and then they find that the families, uh, the children grow up, and uh -huh. then what are they going to do with the rest of their lives? And uh -huh. they've been home. They feel uh, inadequate. They have not been adequately attended to. If they want to get back into the job force, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they uh, find that they have inadequate skills, or society really doesn't want them, and oh. they they look upon them as um, useless, uh, so where deteriorating. Are you where are you going with those women? We are. We have um, had a number of actions, and we have monthly meetings. We have committees. But what happens to the women? I mean, are, ah. they, are they getting lost? Are they? Are no, they, no. The women where are, are we not going with them. The women are joining the older women's league. They are coming together. They are talking amongst themselves. They're supporting each other. Uh -huh. They're developing new friends, and their self-esteem has been enhanced oh. tremendously. We have found a wonderful change in the two years that the Manhattan really? chat. Yes. As a matter of fact, two years ago, yeah. uh, just a little vignette. When we first convened. Uh, at our president's apartment, mm -hmm. the women, oh, there were about a hundred women there, and they all supported the concept of the Older Women's League, changing mm. public policy and improving the status of the older woman, midlife and older women, but they didn't like the name of the Older Women's League. Ah. Couldn't we change it? Here we said. go again. Right. Yes. Getting uh, older. What's getting happening old? to you? They wanted <laughs> adult, they wanted mature, Charity. they didn't want. Older. older. I'll tell and you a story about that. Primarily too. because it's such a pejorative term in uh -huh. our society. Right. And nobody wants to be called an older woman. And they said, nobody would join your organization. That's not true. We, nationally, we have 7,000 members. Uh -huh. And within two and a half years, we have 70, over 75 chapters. The Manhattan group now has 300 members. Uh -huh. And we're growing and all the time. And you have a symbol that says, Older the women. women. And I'm proud. <laughs> and you know, I, it just seems to me that what you're saying now is that when people stop staying by themselves and isolated and, and bemoaning their fate and get together and talk about it, there's a certain pride that comes out there, a certain dignity, a certain self-respect. Not only that. Is that important? Not, it's, it's important, and then they can go on to do other things. Well, ah. we have found that in our... Uh -huh. Uh, the women have been uh, supported. They've been stroked, so to speak. They've been giving, given little jobs, little uh, committees to form, mm -hmm. and they've blossomed beautifully. Good. What do they do there in your place? Well, one of, one of the watchwords of Tish Summers, the founder of OWL, is don't agonize, organize. And ah. I think that that's, that's really a message that a lot of great Panthers have listened to over the... And by the way, Tish Summers was a, a, a member of our national board, and we uh -huh. feel very close to uh, right. the formation of AL. Uh -huh. I, think, I think we find that coming alive um, through political activities, through involvement in demonstrations, through lobbying, through 
pushing. What do they lobby for? Well, we're concerned with uh, really four basic issues that take in a lot of specifics. Uh -huh. um, decent health care for people of all ages, and we would right. like to see a national health service to provide that. In the meantime, we have It'd to be work nice on. Nice if everybody had it. That's right. The same kind of health care that the president. But the older and people are more conscious of the need for it. I think so, and I think there's also the, the longer view. People who struggled for Social Security, who've struggled over the years for the social programs, are furious that they're being taken away. We're uh -huh. also concerned in housing in a similar kind of way for uh, a continuum of choice in housing for people through the life cycle so that the needs for housing uh, when you raise your family or when your children move away, uh, when you're alone or when you're with a larger group are there and people can find Is housing in the really community. Is there really anything special that we're looking forward to in housing for older people as you grow older? Is there a different need for housing? Well, there certainly is if you begin to have problems with uh, mobility or become disabled in one way or another, as most of us will uh -huh. at some point in our, our life cycle. Right. And they are housing uh, that provides for uh, uh, electric fixtures that are, that are reachable, uh, grab bars, uh, uh -huh. door, right. door widths, for example, if you're temporarily or permanently in a wheelchair, right. uh, security systems so that Isn't you're that checked on every day. Isn't that required now in new housing that a certain percentage? Well, I know in uh, government housing they require a certain percentage, don't well, they? One of the other uh, things that OWL is working for is to help the older woman become or remain independent as long as possible. As you know, if they uh, don't, if they cannot find anyone to help them at home, they go into nursing homes. And what OWL is uh, fighting for, this is one of our issues this year that we voted on, mm -hmm. is uh, relief care for the caregiver. And the caregiver generally is the older woman who may take care of the husband, but then who might be infirm, but then when he dies, yeah. what happens to her? She has nobody to take she care has of no her. one to take care of her. So, and right now, the government does not um, support uh, financially anybody to come in and help the woman who may just need uh, a little help around the house. Well, we have something under uh, a sort of Medicaid assistance in the home attendant. Mm -hmm. uh, we that, certainly have to expand that. Somewhere. That's Medicaid, but what about, well, what about Medicare? I mean, we have all these working families that just stayed above mm -hmm. the, uh, the, poverty, the line. poverty line, and they don't have accessibility to any of these cares and things like that. No, but let's get back to that uh, housing thing. What, what about, what's this we hear about shared housing? Well, shared housing, I think, is something we're going to be seeing and needing a lot more of. In, yeah, what, what in, is it like? In the next century, we're going to have many more single people, um, single mothers, older people who if yep. things go the way they are, we'll be living alone. And sometimes in, in apartments or houses that are really too big provide more space than people really uh -huh. need. Right. So we've seen in the Great Panthers experiments around the country with people, sometimes older people living together, sometimes intergenerational groups, sharing uh, a common and area. Older and, and younger yes. people in the same house? Sharing a common area, but also but having their private the same space. same family. Of, right, who are not related by, uh, by family ties, uh -huh. coming together uh, in, in families of choice. Uh -huh. One of the things that we found that uh, last month at our uh, monthly meeting that OWL has, several of the women asked if we're going to have programs on shared housing because they're beginning to get interested in it with the rising rents. And also it's not only the economic aspect of it, mm -hmm. but it's the social and the uh, interpersonal relationships. As you get well, old, at least you feel somebody's there if there is a problem mm -hmm. or something's going to happen. Is there any outlook for government to help us on this kind of shared housing? I think housing? we're on a real collision course. The kind That's of housing that, that the federal government really, in, in, in fact, subsidizes are large single family homes through the homeowner income that's tax programs, true. and that's yeah. what's being Doesn't built. Doesn't even help the urban uh, residents. They're too expensive for most people to afford, and if we build a lot of those kind of homes in the rest of the century, by the time the 21st century arrives, we're going to have a majority of people with certain housing needs, and then our housing, which is really out of whack with, with the needs. So we're not really thinking in very long-range or even short-range plans uh -huh. in, in national housing. And there housing. will be a greater older generation that's going to need it. We have about 26 million people over 65 now, and oh, really? in the year 2020, we'll probably have about 45 million older people. Well, so there'll be, more, there'll be more of us, uh -huh, uh -huh. and I stress us, because us. older people are not a separate group. They're not uh, a category set apart. They're all of us, and maybe uh -huh. we should stop talking about them and uh, start and talking about us. <laughs> and the majority of those 26 million people are older women who... Yeah. Uh, well, for instance, right. we... Yes, you're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. And 
they're the ones that are getting ground down because they didn't have the training and the jobs and, Not only that, and but Social they, Security. The Social so. Security, they didn't have the jobs and they 60% uh, of women over age 65 subsist only on Social Security. I know. I think the median uh, amount is about $4,000. $4,700. $4,700, $4, is $400 below the poverty line. That's right. Yeah. So it's, it's a really tough one. I, I just was wondering, uh, how does uh, Section 8 that's given as a support for rent, is that applicable here in, in terms of the share Well, there, there have been problems um, with that. And, and last year there was legislation introduced to uh, provide uh, Section 8 subsidies to people in shared housing, and that's, yeah. that's still not really possible. It hasn't passed, and there'll have to be regulations. But one of the local problems is zoning often operates against shared housing, and even if the subsidies, the federal subsidies were there to make it economical, uh -huh. uh, local zoning will not permit unrelated people uh, to live together in the same. Ah, oh, so we're so going to have, a, we've to have a local and a federal struggle, and right. housing we always do. <laughs> oh, dear. In other words, we're going to have to agree. Well, I think we've had a couple of court cases where people who have lived together, though they're not, quote, officially <laughs> married, have to be recognized as having the right to live in the same house whatever the relationship uh, may be there. And some of it is just not necessarily family or sexual or anything mm -hmm. of that sort. Well, I think this is very interesting because obviously we're going to have to work in that direction. Too many people being shoved into institutions or something of that kind instead of being given the uh, fair kind of housing. What was the other thing you said your Great Panthers were working on? Well, towards? the other two issues that we're concerned with is Social Security, really more broadly income support. Oh, wow. Support. They really ripped us, us off too. on that. That's right. They? And mm -hmm. we haven't given up the struggle, uh, particularly because we I think things think are going to get a lot worse. I people realize uh, to what degree that was cut down. And how unnecessary it was. I mean, there really Why? were other Why ways. Why was it unnecessary? Everybody other says you saved it. Well, I don't know what we've saved. We've lost an awful lot uh, what did in we terms lose? of, of what well, we, we lost the cost of living increases, which will amount to about $40 billion. S six months. That's right. We uh, raised the retirement age so that um, working people will have to retire at 67 in the future, whereas wealthy right. people with their IRAs can retire at 59 and a half. Oh, really? Uh, oh, what, gosh. What, I didn't realize. The and the older women are going to suffer the most of this. Mm -hmm. There's an in, uh, inequality of sacrifice right here because when they uh, delay the cost of uh, the COLA, the, uh, the rents are going up, uh, food goes up, and the people still have, the older women still have the same amount of money for those six, uh, six uh -huh. months. So they may have to decide between uh, heat, between eating, and between housing where they're going to pay the rent that month yes. and their health. Well, health is even a worse problem because the, the uh, cuts that are being proposed by Stockman and Reagan now in Medicare and Medicaid mm -hmm. are right. absolutely devastating. Mm -hmm. It's, I mean, I think of, of David Stockman's plan as a kind of uh, you know, the old torture where you cut off one toe and one finger and then slowly you get closer to the body. And that's really the way the proposals are coming what out. They're shaving saying? every tiny mm -hmm. little edge around Medicare and Medicaid to make people uh -huh. pay more at every step of the phase, which will, which will really mean a lot of people just won't use health care. Right. Do you think that we have to get back to the idea that this is government responsibility? I think that, health yes, insurance. absolutely. Yeah, national I mean, health a lot of insurance. people have pushed that aside and said national health insurance. We begin to look towards private industry and private operations to give us what benefits well, we Well, we oppose national health insurance. Um, uh -huh. We feel what we would like is a national health service. And na national health insurance would still maintain the profits in the private insurance uh -huh. industry. And we think would do very little to cut costs. I mean, now Medicare is administered by insurance companies, and the and the uh, and it's very expensive. It's very it's very expensive. What we would like to really see is a national health service embodied in uh, the the Dellums bill. Is that bill. the kind of thing they have in Canada? They have in every other industrialized country except South Africa. Really? Yeah, we'd England, like to, France. Mm -hmm. We'd like to bring All the United States into the 20th century if we're going to ever make the 21st century. And <laughs> you know, I, I just think we have to start talking again. If we're talking about where are we going with the older people. We have to start talking about government responsibilities for some of these services, you know, not that we depend on, on employers or corporations or private insurance companies, because Lord knows. I just read, you know, talk about utility, I just read that Con Ed had raised their rates five times in the last couple of years. How can you depend on them to give you service and mm -hmm. help, you know, mm -hmm. to meet your own mm -hmm. needs, particularly mm -hmm. as you grow older? When you have to pass a rule that Con is not allowed to turn out your lights. And what about telephone? That or could be telephone. a lifeline to many older That's people. That's right, that you're not allowed well, to do Suppose we ran our fire service the way we run health care and housing in the United States, where every time you had a fire, you would yeah. have a private company come up, and they would try to shake you down to pay them off in advance. 
And if you didn't have fire insurance, wow. you wouldn't get your fire put out. We used to do that, and we learned in New York uh -huh. City by around the time of the Civil War that the cities burn down when you when you have private fire uh -huh. insure, uh, fire service. Uh -huh. And I think that we we have to learn that we need the same kind of approach in health and housing. Well, there's a lot more to learn, people isn't there, die. about health of older people? As you get older, there are different kinds of health problems? There's different kinds of health problems, and you can't just put groups of health, you know, those under 40 or those over 60 in one group, because they're, they are different. They may have some health problems in mm -hmm. common, but they are uh, quite different uh, cohorts. Do we have trained people who know how to deal with these problems, oh. or do we still have to train the medical profession there are very to give attention to that. There are very few medical colleges yeah. who that are uh, that have gerontology as a um, specialty uh -huh. and a course of study. They did a recent uh, um, a recent study, nineteen I think in nineteen eighty, uh -huh. and a very small percentage of the uh, medical colleges were training gerontologists, and yet. About 50 percent of the population uh, in, in uh, 2000 is going to be over uh, right. 55. So yeah. in talking about where we're going, that's one of the things. We have a call coming in. Hi, how are you? Hello. Yes. Oh, uh, this is a question to you yes. because I've met you personally before. Yes. I live in a co-op apartment and this was my, my husband. In 1967, he was alive, we invested. Uh -huh. Now, I'm alone, partially very sick with arthritis, and they want to raise the equity, $300 per room. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I applied for the Section 8, uh -huh. and they told me I couldn't be done because there was a lot of people ah, who had problems On the list, right. You have a personal problem there, and I'm not going to try and deal with it here. Call my office and speak to my staff. Let's see whether we can look into this. The office number is 566-1324. And if you don't remember, it's in the telephone book, okay? Thank you. You're welcome. All righty. Okay, let's get back to some of these things that we're looking forward to. Obviously, there are certain things that if you say you're organizing in the Great Panthers politically and you're organizing for the rights of people and people are beginning to get a little feel a little muscle, you know, a little bit of strength. I know one other thing I'd like to see organized, and that is jobs. Oh. People just die when they're forced to, well, first of all, if they're not working at all and suddenly confronted, or they're working, and most people are working these days, they have to, and then suddenly are forced to retire, and it's like they're going full blast and then it's cut off, you know, no go. Well, that's one of the things that OWL is helping the women to do, is that you don't retire. One of the, Well, we'd like to help them get jobs and, yeah. and have them jobs, but that you don't, re, you don't retire from life. You retire from a job and to begin to plan for the last 20 to 30 years of your life because that is one-third left of your life um, mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. many, many women. And if I might talk about our conference, which is one of our... <laughs> ah, they're having a conference. We're having a May conference, 14th. May 15th. May 15th, uh, okay. And one of our uh, workshops, it's called Survival Over 50, and we're dealing with health, economic, and social issues. And one of our workshops, one of nine, will be on pre-retirement uh -huh. and planning, as, as well as surviving solo. What do you do in New York? Uh -huh. Well, you know, one of the things I'm going to raise, and that is... Uh, I would like to see it. I have a bill in the council not to have any mandatory retirement. In other words, not to be forced to go off a job if you are capable of doing it. People don't realize that's discrimination. When you are told to retire at a certain age, regardless of whether you're capable of doing the job or not. Or you're not hired because you're a certain age. That's right. I mean, how do we, we can legislate, but how do we change the attitudes and help? Uh, it's like a catch-22 the firms will not hire the older person so that they can begin to change some of the attitudes and they maintain the, uh, the, ad the stereotypes so that they cannot have the opportunity well, to I change I think some them. of the legislation that your people are, you are working on in terms of jobs, the job bill I think that's just come out of Washington has a small piece in it, does it, for uh, the jobs for older people? Well, we, I'm, I'm not sure about the specifics. We, we certainly think that there, there needs to be expanded uh, jobs for people of all ages, and we're very much concerned with doing away with mandatory retirement. 
we would like to see people who are able to continue working after they reach some particular day and, uh -huh. and why should it be their 65th or their 70th birthday continue to work but we also have a problem and here the social security cuts are very severe uh -huh. uh, seventy percent of people retire at the age of sixty two they retire on reduced benefits early on social security and most american people who retire at that age either retire because of health reasons or because they're unemployed they just can't find work mm -hmm. so we need to have retirement protection for people at sixty two which the reagan uh... changes in social security uh, are going to cut a lot but we also have to have jobs available for people uh, of all right. ages and in building the kind of housing we need in building the facilities for a national health service in providing the kind of human service care respite care as you were talking about home health care we mm -hmm. think we can open up a lot of jobs for women and men uh... in doing the things in our society that have to be done well do you know that part of the federal uh budget that we originally had that we fought for very hard had title twenty which was the helping in the senior centers and mm -hmm. programs and right. those entailed jobs mm -hmm. and then there was title five which helped right. with the service food service and outreach service and that had part-time jobs in it as the well PSC as the jobs right. that's right and that was cut mm -hmm. when they cut the uh, we saved some of it last system. summer but it's, it was never big enough to begin with i mean uh -huh. we keep thinking about what's happened with the reagan administration as cuts instead of saying if maybe if we had someone else the president we would be saying why shouldn't we be expanding the programs and improving benefits ah. that's where we really ought to be in and other words if we're looking ahead we have to stop thinking of catching up with the reagan uh... cruelty well there's going to be a lot of work violence, just to do right? that but we certainly but do we sh well i look agree ahead. with you i think that we ought to put our uh... focus ahead i don't think it's enough to say let's get what we had before which was inadequate mm -hmm. obviously inadequate and particularly for older people it was inadequate because, you know, we didn't realize there was this tremendous generation, it's a generation, 20 years, mm -hmm. you know, of people that have come alive, have said we're here, they're no longer hiding, uh, they're not, and they're demanding a certain amount of attention and respect and, and such. dignity. And dignity. They have right. experience, they have maturity, they have uh, a whole history of background, mm -hmm. and they can bring so much to a job. Right. I saw an interesting article in a uh, newspaper that comes out of the state, New York State government, and it said uh, the push uh, to get people to retire early because they wanted to cut the budget mm -hmm. up in the state has left them without certain key personnel mm -hmm. that they need to mm -hmm. get the job done. Mm -hmm. I was at the university, State University in Albany, where Did the people who that? really run the heating and utility system for the <laughs> campus in the winter right. time are the ones who are going to retire and there's no one else who knows how to do that. Knows how so to they in that? fact have to go out and hire new people. Now crazy? one of the things that we, we're interested in is flexible uh, work and uh -huh. work sharing so that people don't retire and then go home mm -hmm. and vegetate. But they, people might retire over time through choice. So in fact a lot of the men that we're it's talking about job. in that university uh, in Albany could work say for uh -huh. 20 hours a week and come in and apprentice younger right. men to learn the skills that they have. It's a good way to do it. I think we're just touching on the subject on what's ahead and we are coming to the end of our time but I think what you've really begun to say is first of all a new generation working together fighting like they have for a lifetime for justice and for other things and peace by the way is a very important that's thing. Fourth issue. That's our fourth <laughs> issue. Yes. That's our real issue and I want to say thank you both of you for being here Ruby Benjamin, Robert Sanjic and we're just beginning to talk about getting older and what's ahead. Miriam Friedlander, City Councilwoman, have a good evening.